Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at two Kaisers and how they're expanding the lines of those knives. Uh, we're going to take a look at a knife that, well, I've been wanting for 25 years. And then that knife inspires the topic. And at long last, I can get to my Cold Steel Fixed Blade Knife Collection. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Hollywood Tactical, good friend of Thursday Night Knives and a man who is never afraid to voice unpopular opinions. He said, aside from Andrew Demko, I only see custom folder makers titanium making titanium frame locks in order to maximize profit. Yesterday's technology at tomorrow's prices. Production companies are making micarta button locks and crossbar locks for sub $100. As for custom fixed blades, I can get a bark river that beats custom fixed blades all day. And of course, I have uh, I have issues with this, as many might, because we all have our own opinions. Uh, but a, I like that he is, uh, you know, feels free to voice them without without getting uh, without getting shouted down by the mob. A and B, he does bring up an interesting uh, point about the frame locks. Now, it is a form. Uh, it is a form like a rock and roll song. And you know, if you like rock and roll, and uh, there are creative enough bands out there, you can keep writing rock songs. Uh, for the rest of time, kind of like you can keep making frame locks for the rest of time. Now, if they all start looking the same, that's an issue. But uh, it as a uh, as a platform is just a fine thing. That's all it is, a platform, like a movie or a song. Um, and uh, as far as the fixed blade knives, that I think that's painting with a really broad brush, but he brings up an, a very interesting point. Uh, in that Bark River knives are outstanding, and you know if you want to if you want to go down that path, you can go much lower than that and say a uh, an, an inexpensive cold steel fixed blade can do you right, you know, for the rest of your life. So uh, it's all a matter of how much of a junkie you are and how much you want to collect, and what you want to have uh, around you when your cutting needs arise. All right, so let's do a pocket check. So uh, this day, uh, I decided to flex on my rights, my newfound rights, to carry an automatic. So today, I had uh, my inaugural legal automatically, uh, uh, legally purchased automatic knife with me today. This is the Manticore X from Heretic. It's the big one. That's a four-inch blade, and uh, it has very smooth actuation. Um, when I when I picked it up at the Heretic booth, I, I had a Tonto version of this at the Heretic booth at Blade Show. I was very uh, pleased to feel the action. Like you can, you can tell there are ball bearings in there uh, underneath this slide. So it has a certain sort of smoothness uh, that my Microtex uh, lacked a little bit. And, and that was the feeling I had. Then again, when I use this next to a Microtex, there are certain things about the Microtex I like better. So um, just two great uh, brands of knives coming from the same um, Italian-American family, the Marfiones, Marfionis. And uh, this is by son, Sean Marfione. Uh, this is his company, Heretic Knives. Anyway, just a beautiful recurve. You know I love recurves. And then you look at the two-tone nature of the blade, and it really accentuates uh, the recurve nature. Plus, this blade reminds me of something you might see on a Walter Brend fixed blade fighter. And I've always liked that shape, that drop point shape, but with a sort of hump on top and a nice recurve on the bottom. Uh, just wicked. Uh, use this for nothing other than showing off today. Uh, next up, I had a, a um, you know, with the Jack Wolf knives, uh, really um, reinvigorating my slip joint uh, love. You know, I come in and out of different phases. That's how I am with everything. Uh, and, uh, uh, 
Ben and Jack Wolf Knives just really thrust me back into a slip joint phase. So I started looking. I've been I've been carrying Jack Wolf Knives pretty much straight for five and a half months. Uh, and so I decided, you know, I have a lot of other nice slip joints. Let's pull something out. Uh, and I wanted something different. So I went for this Lion Steel Gitano or Gitano, I think it is, um, which means gypsy, I think. Uh, beautiful Navaja style blade. This is um, a Goody Von Poppel's design. And if you're not familiar with him, uh, you must uh, follow him on Instagram. His custom knives are just amazing. Goody Von Poppel, I believe he's he's Dutch. And uh, uh, his uh, G-U-D-Y and then Von Poppel is his last name. But just amazing things. If you like knives that look like this, that look like traditional sort of Spanish, uh, Western European folding knives, and um, he makes the, you know, you got to follow him. He makes these in in flipper, uh, very, very uh, ornate. Some of them just really incredible work and design work. Uh, and Lion Steel knocked it out of the park with the with the execution of this. It has a really strong spring, great walk and talk. This is a very reliable, I mean, this is something you might even feel comfortable thrusting with. And I'm not talking love, like, you know, knife fighting with this, but I just mean, uh, you know, if you had to, if you had to push that point into something, it, the point is in a good spot compared to the uh, rest of the knife. It's a little bit low slung and it's also uh, held by a very strong spring. And spine of this is crowned and the spine of the lock is crowned. This is the olive wood, I believe. Olive wood, very, very nice wood. And uh, this is one of those rare occasions where in choosing the knife, I, I chose wood over micarta or, or carbon fiber. Um, uh, there are some knives that I just really uh, have been digging the wood on. And actually, uh, I'll jump right to my, uh, before I get to the fixed blade, I'll, I'll jump right to my uh, emotional support knife today. This also has wood. Uh, this was not of my choosing. It was sent to me by Finch Knives. And man, I'm I'm really grateful that uh, I got the wood, the wood one. They have this in Jig Titanium and also in Abalone. Both beautiful, but to me on this design, um, that Cocobolo wood is just amazing. Uh, this was here for emotional support. It got a lot of flipping today. Uh, got no use. The Gitano was the only one that got used today uh, in uh, work food prep type activities. Uh, it's a classy knife to pull out around the work friends. And uh, and 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 when you sh when you show a knife that is just, um, you know, undeniably beautiful, it 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 draws people to it and they and they appreciate it more. And it, it's more of a door opener as opposed to uh, beautiful in a different sort of, you know, tactical way. Like, say, this knife. This is the uh, uh, the EDC Tanto by Hogtooth Knives. This is the one I had in my belt today. Always feel very confident with this knife uh, in hand, not only because um, this knife saved the day and not really, but it was a feather sticking experience. And uh, it did such a great job that I've used this now for utility. Um, of course, I got it as a self-defense knife um, because it has a proven record as being an effectful, uh, effective one. Uh, but it also, in, in my experience, has a very effective, uh, or, or which, what am I trying to say? It has a proven past of being effective with utility stuff, even including carving wood. So love that knife. That's 154 CM, uh, as is the uh, Finch knife. This is... Uh, what is this nitro V I think or Nylox or something I don't, Nylox. And then this is M390. So this is what I had on me today. The heretic Manticore X, the lion steel Gitano, the, the hog tooth EDC Tonto. And for emotional support, the buff uh, Buffalo tooth by Finch knives. Tell me what were you carrying today? Uh, let me know. Um, always interested to find out what people have on them. I got a classy, classy, uh, bunch of people out there watching and listening. And so, uh, it's always fun to hear what you have. Uh, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at uh, Kaiser expanding two lines and a new Lacey Zabo from Tops. I am so excited about that knife. Um, but before we get there, I just want to remind you that if you like what we do here and you want to support the show, you can do that on Patreon. Uh, you can just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and uh, and 
check out the different tiers of support We're putting up a lot of exclusive content there's also opportunities for knife giveaways and stickers and all that stuff so go check it out um if you have the means and the inclination it's greatly appreciated uh knifejunkie.com slash patreon thank you and see you in a moment if you're a knife junkie you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I swear, without exaggeration, I want every single one of those knives that was just featured in that Knife Ship Free. Uh, man, those are beautiful. All of them. All of them. Uh, I, I do like that new Kershaw uh, slip joint, too awesome looking knife all right uh speaking of great knives i'm i've been very into kaiser especially the vanguard line over this past year and so there's some exciting news coming from them uh two great lines they have one old tried and true and one brand new uh they are expanding and the first one is the uh ulrich hennecke um he's a german former german police officer turned knife maker knife designer um uh, i first learned about him through the Spiderco Uliza, which is such a great knife. And I, I have that in my collection. Anyway, he came out with the T1 uh, with Kaiser. It was a frame lock, titanium frame lock, and people went bonkers over it. They loved it. Uh, so it's now in the Vanguard line and uh, with 154 CM and Micarta. Now, this is uh, this is something I've been seeing, seeing teased for a while. And uh, I thought it was for the taking for a while, but apparently this is uh, now being... Uh, announced anyway. Uh, so that's welcome. Uh, the, the T1 is a beautiful, in its simplicity and utility, uh, drop point drop point knife. So it's cool to see it more available to a wider crowd like me because I don't have the, the real strong desire to have this knife in titanium, but I certainly knowing and loving the Vanguard line and thinking this looks like a great EDC uh, would grab this knife for a for what it's going to cost or for what it costs in the vanguard line uh next up is a goofily named assassin which came out uh in a three inch uh clipped drop point that's what i'm calling it it looks kind of like a clip point but really it's kind of just a drop point um because of that swedge it looks clip pointish but anyway uh the assassin um nice little button lock respectable little three inch button lock well they're blowing it up to the xl uh which is 3.4 inches which to me is not xl that's just that's just right in the middle uh but for a knife that comes out as three inches adding almost a half inch is a pretty dramatic um increase in size uh, i do like the look of this as a larger knife better i, I think i will I, I would like this better as a large knife. It's one of the excellent, excellent button locks that are coming out from Kaiser. And um, that is exciting. It's the name, man. The name really turns me off. Assassin, uh, especially on the three-inch EDC. Why would you call a three-inch EDC knife the Assassin? That, that's just, that doesn't make any sense because that is the kind of knife you might have on you to work to bring to work or just to have on you as an EDC. And if something did happen and you got in trouble with the law for whatever reason, and you had that on you, uh, and it's an innocent little three inch knife that you use for EDC, but it's called the, the, the assassin. It's, it just doesn't look good guys. It doesn't look good. Uh, so making an assassin XL, it looks a, a little less good or a little more not good. Um, but that's just, that's just my opinion. I, I think that, naming things uh that are you know that can obviously be used to harm someone to to name them that is just a little on the nose and it and it's counterproductive to those of us who who just want our knife rights as broad as possible uh but i'm sure kaiser's not so concerned about that um so two exciting new line expansions next up this one is really exciting to me like 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 uh, viscerally. Uh, th so this knife, I've talked about this a lot over the years. This is the Felony Stop by Lacey Zabo. And he is 
a, a former, or, or I'm not sure if he's former, but uh, law enforcement uh, designs really cool, crazy uh, tactical knives. And uh, you you should look him up and and uh, do an image search on his knives there. He's got some real doozies, real unique, real useful for, um, you know, fighting tactical purposes. Uh, this is a great little knife and tops, uh, tops featured this. Um, they're still making this knife great little double-edged dagger, but with a pistol grip and a nice thumb swale you can use for trapping in reverse grip, which is pretty cool. Um, but he has a new one out and it's also with tops and it's called the express and I'm head over heels over this knife. And I keep kind of, uh, lurking my favorite, lurking at my favorite purveyors to see if it's out yet. Um, but it is the, uh, uh this is the express and it is a fighting knife period that's that's the point you could use it for anything else uh or not anything else you could use it for other stuff that you use a, a knife for but it is a dagger ground blade and uh, i guess technically it's bayonet ground because they aren't exactly symmetrical but pretty much they are it also does appear to have a slight downward recurve i mean i mean very slight um but it comes with such a thinly ground swedge that they offer it in double-edged or single-edged, depending on your jurisdiction. Uh, I'm not sure what the rules are in mine about double-edged, to be frank. Uh, I'm not sure if they ever got that specific. Uh, so I'm going to, you know what I'm going to get. Look at these. Against that, uh, against that maroon background, quite beautiful. Uh, but I like the very uh, simple arced handle setup. He usually does some very committal uh, sort of choiled and grooved handles. And this one is very restrained and I think extremely practical. Uh, I like the size of it too. That's a, a five, uh, what is it? 5.4 inch blade. So it's, it's big, but not too big. You don't like, I, I think unless you're dueling with Bowie's for a tactical knife, you don't want something too big, obviously, because you're, you're going to want to be able to switch from forward grip to reverse grip and reverse grip with a big knife is weird. And, uh, you know, you, like you see it in movies, you see people with swords and reverse grip slashing. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's just to look cool. Um, so, uh, this is the perfect size, perfect shape and perfect option to have that thing double edged. Very excited about this. It's in 1095 steel with, uh, my car to handle scales and they look a little bit more like the uh, wild pig hunter scales than they do the Rocky Mountain Tread. I think um, I can't quite tell, but it's a it's a nice looking setup there. You got that thumb ramp and uh, you're going to want your thumb to to really dig into that thumb ramp because anywhere beyond that, you're in a world of hurt. Even if it's an unsharpened swedge and you put your thumb on top of it, it's thin enough. It's going to hurt. Uh, so there it is. It's the Lacey Zabo Tops collaboration, the Express in single edged or double edged. Choose your, choose your your favorite. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some new knives here in the collection, and then my collection of cold steel fixed blades. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so. Unless you've been living under a rock or in a cold, dark place, you've seen the new Benny's clip. And actually, the new Benny's clip is, man, it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. I'm going to show it to you right now. This is the first Benny's clip, uh, first Lanny's clip style knife I've ever had in my collection. And uh, man, it's a beaut. It's black uh, canvas micarta. You've got the blasted titanium handle scales, or not handle scales, I'm sorry, liners with the bolsters integrated in, meaning it's one solid piece on each side of titanium with a milled out spot for that micarta to go. You'll excuse me if I wipe this down a bunch of times because I can't stand the fingerprints. Um, but it, you will notice looking at this, that this is the first Jack Wolf Knives knife that is not a full height hollow grind. And uh, that is in keeping with the Lanny's clip style of clip blade uh, of clip uh, point blade. This one, uh, like many traditional clip point blades, has a slight recurve built into it. And again, I mean slight uh, that aids in cutting performance on a pull cut, but also uh, uh, through the life of that blade and through the sharpening of that blade, 
you don't get, uh, you know, you, you're able to maintain a decent belly. You don't get it uh, slimming out like a fillet knife as quickly. Uh, and so that belly down there towards the front and the whole shape of that blade uh, is sort of meant for long life. And uh, the swedge on top uh, is just, you know, so pleasing to me. And it adds to the to the um, penetration of that tip as as a swedge does. Uh, nice nail nick on that side. M390 blade steel. Outstanding walk and talk, of course. Everything about this is pure Jack Wolf knife. It is the largest of the Jack Wolf knives so far. And I have to say, it's the one I would feel most confident in doing the hardest work you would do with a slip joint. They all are, um, you know, robustly built out of titanium and M390. But this one with the size and, um, I don't know, the strength of the spring, they all have real strong springs. But to me, this one just feels like the one you can get the big, the strongest grip on to do the hardest work with. Um, now, granted, you're not going to want to do too hard. Uh, you're not going to want to do work that's too hard for this knife. Um, it's not a hard use knife, but uh, man, I, I love it. And this is a, this is all of these things are generational keepsakes. You know, the, this is something um, that will be on the short list when I, when I kick the bucket or, or when I update the will, you know, to say, um, these are ones you don't get rid of, or if you do make sure that you get the right, you know, right price or the right uh, kind of collector getting this. This is a, a real, these are real heirloom type pieces, I think. Um, so anyway, this one came in this week uh, with the, with the requisite packaging uh, and the artwork and the, the wonderful leather pocket slip. I think that's a very, uh, such a nice thing in each Jack Wolf knife to get a pocket slip like that. So, uh, before that I have, I had one or two that I would swap all the knives in and out of. So they never imprinted a specific knife on that leather, which will happen over time. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing excites me. All right. Uh, I'm just going to put this in front of the mic so you can hear. Great, great walk and talk. And as usual, uh, totally flush spring at the uh, half stop. And you've got those nice, luxurious, fluted um, bolsters. Two two little details that that uh, slip joint nerds love. You know, I shouldn't say nerds. I should say aficionados. All right, so that's the Benny's clip. Speaking of clip, this week I got uh, an addition. I got an MXG gear short titanium clip for the Delica. Okay, so I've had this Delica. I got this Delica a few years ago. It was a gift from Stu of Stone and Steel Cutlery up in Vermont. Uh, he sent sent it to me. It had the black handles. I loved it, but I wanted to upgrade it, make it a little more special and luxurious. So I got these titanium handle scales from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and put them on. But I still had the big long black clip with the hole with the lanyard hole in it. You know that standard um, Delica clip, Delica Endura. Spider Co clip and it was so long it came down to about here that whenever I grip a Delica it always kind of I don't know I always feel it right up here a little high up in the hand and so I decided this is such a great knife it's got such an awesome blade great for utility great for peace of mind and cool looking and a worn clip and it's got these nice titanium handle scales that feel so good in hand and give it a nice weight uh, I need to upgrade the pocket clip, so I start carrying this thing legitimately. I've had it a long time, and I, I never carry it. So I got this, and I've been carrying it a lot now. I really like the clip. I, I've always liked MXG gear clips. It doesn't bother me that they have the dome screws and they sit flat on top of the scales because they're very generous in this part. So you can always fit that over even like work pants and stuff. So total upgrade to the this uh uh, uh, serrated Warncliffe Delica with titanium handle scales. Um, thanks once again, Stu. I will be carrying this now so much more. This is definitely a great back pocket knife for me. Or uh, shorts. I've been wearing this in the in the shorts this past weekend. It's been hot. So, yep, that's that. And then last here, um, I want to show you this uh, Dirk Pinkerton asymmetrical. Um, from the asymmetrical line of Beyond EDC, this is his contact. 
And this is a Dirk Pinkerton knife through and through. Uh, look at that beautiful, beautiful Warncliffe. I was telling Jim that that tip, that Warncliffe, um, the angle of that Warncliffe tip is what I consider ideal. It is perfect. It's the perfect angle. What is it? Is it? Is it whatever that is? No. Uh, so it's close though. It's close to. Uh, it, it's a. It's a perfect angle for a Warncliffe because you get that awesome tip use. You get the great utility of the Warncliffe in pull cuts and and that kind of tip cut. But also, it's got that angle to the tip to uh and and the angle of the blade is right down center line so the point is right in the middle is what i'm getting at and so great for uh thrusting this would be an awesome knife to have if you had to use if you had to fight with a really nice titanium frame lock this would be an excellent one because of that blade shape i love worn cliffs but they have to have a point um when when a worn cliff starts veering into sheep's foot territory or or uh or oh, what's that one? Yeah, sheep's foot. Uh, it's it's just it's too blunt at the tip. Like I like being able to use that tip for those utility chores, but I also like knowing that if I have a very stout uh, clamshell package or something, I can use the tip to get in. And that is the same angle you'll find on the Warren Cliffs uh, made by Hinderer knives. the The angle on that front tip is very much the same. And I think that's why this is so appealing to me. Um, this is on loan from from Dirk. Uh, I think I might offer to buy it. I don't know if it's <laughs> up for sale, but I I really like it. It's funny. It came to me. I think this has been in some other hands. And it came to me. It had three pieces of hair on it. Three pieces of hair on it. Like someone tested it on their, their arm and didn't clean it. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Uh, it, and it's very sharp, so I could see why someone would be tempted to test it in such a way. All right, so today's topic, cold steel fixed blade knives, uh, were actually, uh, was actually inspired by something that should be in the state of the collection, but I'll just show it here and then we'll, we'll back up to it. This, the acquisition of the Taipan, a knife I've wanted for over 25 years, or 25 years at least, I'll say, uh, finally, finally got off the fence and bought it. And uh, now I feel like I can show my cold steel fixed blade collection. I've been waiting for that one to join for years. All right. But first, we're going to start with the one that that started it all. Not just the cold steel fixed blade collection, but the collection in general. Uh, I got this. I think I was a junior in high school, and that was in the late 80s. And uh, that is this, the Master Tonto by Cold Steel. This is the six-inch blade. Uh, the first knife that really that put cold steel on the map. I think this is the first knife they ever made. Uh, had it made in Japan. It says, you yeah. know, says Tonto by Cold Steel, Ventura, California. Wasn't made there. It was made in Japan. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Made in Japan. Little typewriter letters there kind of hard to see uh but yeah it's got a nice uh, machine satin on it deep hollow grind this this was the knife that started my love of hollow grinds this started a lot of things this knife uh i when i got this knife i was so intrigued with its samurai nature that that's when i started doing uh, aikido and that was the first martial art i ever did and i was kind of obsessed with the katana and the samurai thing and the hakama skirt and and the way you look when you flip doing Aikido. And so that started, this knife started a lot. My love of knives, I think it pretty much started me into martial arts. Um, and then Aikido led to other things. Um, but that was the start. And this knife had a lot to do with it. I remember getting this as a junior or senior in high school. And I remember when I went off to, to school uh, in New York State, I remember thinking like, well, at least I have this to bring with me if I need to protect myself. Obviously, I I didn't need it, thank God. And I went to a you know, a, a liberal arts college. I, it was not you know was not necessary. But I remember thinking like leaving home for the first time and living somewhere else. I was like, well, I have this, and this is this will be my constant you know companion next to the bed. And you know what? It's been my constant companion next to the bed ever since. Uh, this is still in the drawer next to. Uh, next to where i sleep along with some other stuff so in case the comments what do you yeah 
All right. Next up is in the Tonto family. Now, to me, Cold Steel really is the one. It is the one. Uh, Lynn Thompson is the one who brought the Tonto to our consciousness, even if it was a Tonto of his own sort of uh, creation and faceting the tip and giving you a secondary tip and making it more chisel like uh, as opposed to more sweeping, which the traditional Tonto is uh, more like. Um, is the Kobun. Now, the Kobun uh, came out with another knife called the <sighs> something else. Damn, I can't remember what it is on the tip of my tongue, but it was this knife, but larger. So they came out with two at the same time. This is the one that has survived, and this is one of their most selling knives, uh, the Kobun, which means bodyguard. The other one meant boss, and I don't remember what it is. Very, very thin. Uh, the handle is quite thin. Great for concealed carry. Uh, this is Aus 8A blade steel. Nice, deeply ground, hollow grind there. I, I like the look of it, too, with the grind lines. It's a very attractive uh, looking blade, but a um, also very efficient uh, slashing, cutting, and piercing blade because you have that flat tip again. A flat tip uh, for... for um, strength at the tip and in, in penetration and then that deep hollow grind for um deep slashes this knife i got one of these for my sister uh years ago when there was a creep involved and a creep you know stalker type person and uh she had this next to her bed for a while i don't know if she still does uh but she told me you know i'm, I'm always very concerned about my sister's security and uh she's like yes i still have it you know so Hopefully she, she does. <laughs> She's not spinning a yarn. Uh, very effective. I, I would feel very confident um, carrying this on me. I, I honestly never have, except at home. This is like a uh, sweatpants or, or workout shorts or pajama setup here with this, with this gentle on the fabric sort of in the waistband clip. It's very light, so it's very totable. Uh, it's got the craton. Now, the craton is the rubberized material a lot of these cold steels that you're going to see have on the handles. And I've had some craton handles for, well, like on the, the first one I showed you for about 30 years now. And they are not disintegrating or getting gummy or anything like that. So they seem pretty stable for like rubber type handles. Um, but still, they are grippy, and that is the one... Uh, thing about carrying this knife concealed that would concern me. I might even wrap most of it in in tape if I if I were really concerned about and I wanted to carry this because it's grippy and fabric like your shirt. I'm gonna see if I can simulate that with this microfiber cloth, but your shirt it might print on it, might grab on it and print unnecessarily. You know what I mean? Whereas a uh, more polished, say my car to handle would be more slippery and fabric would not grab on it. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, you do what you can. Uh, but a very great knife. That's the Coben and uh, a nice affordable, um, affordable, uh, what do I want to say? And very utilitarian, but weapony Tonto. If you're in the market <laughs> and don't want to spend a lot of money. They can be had for about 40 bucks, 45 bucks. All right, next up is uh, a very old one. This is the Col Culloden. I got this in a store in Manhattan way back in the day when you could do something like that. And uh, it is based on the ski and do, the, the sock knife that uh, Scottish men have, except this one is lengthened and uh, tac tacticalized uh, with that cool spine file jimping and a what is this five five i think it's five yeah like a nearly five inch blade very nice for concealed carry again and when you look at it like this it has this outward canting uh, which allows an easier draw plus it if it's against your skin it's a little bit easier uh on um on the on the the love handles if you will and i think you see because it the pommel just angles off ever so slightly. Say you have this in the waistband and you're sitting down. Uh, it would be a little kinder on the love handles. And and I got to say, that's a, a feature I can see Lynn Thompson um, uh, incorporating. And I'm in no way dissing him 
uh, I, I just think, you know, it's practical and it makes sense. Uh, most of us aren't in fighting shape all the time. And uh, just to give a little accommodation in the handle, uh, just a little accommodation is nice. But also it fits in the hand well, too. Um, it fits in the hand uh, in reverse grip really well, too, if you're going to be using this like this. So so that angled handle works well. This was the knife I I remember I had this in my uh, in my I, I used to carry like a courier bag um, and I had this in my courier bag on 9-11 and I'm running around New York City trying to get back to Brooklyn where I lived. And I remember I had this in my bag and I was thinking that I was happy that I had this in my bag. I didn't need it, but I didn't know what the hell was happening. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's funny, you know, like uh, planes are crashing into buildings and things are exploding. But having this five inch knife on me. Um, made me feel better. Now, granted, I was not there. My brother was very close. I was uh, uptown uh, at the time, so I, I was in no immediate danger. But uh, I do remember just thinking, thank God I have this the Culloden on me. So uh, memories, memories. Next up is a the one and only push dagger in my collection, which now that I'm saying this out loud, just seems wrong. Uh, so I think maybe a, a custom push dagger uh, is in is in the, the future someday. I'd like to get one maybe with ivory handles. That'd be ultra classy. And then I'll start playing cards because it seems like you got to play cards with a push dagger. This is the one, uh, as mentioned in Thursday Night Knives uh, recently, this was the model that was used in the movie Platoon, except this was when uh, at that time. They weren't using Kydex. They had these leather sheaths, uh, but just a great push dagger. This one is the Safekeeper 2. Safekeeper 1 was single-edged um, and sort of clip-pointed. Um, never cared for that one. This one is amazing. This one is tremendous. This is like the Taipan, just uh, just the first uh, three and a half inches of the Taipan. Uh, deep hollow grind. Well, not too deep, but hollow grinds. Uh, and a broad blade make this a nice slasher. And of course, that T-shaped handle makes it very <laughs> unlikely that you're going to be disarmed. Um, now, there, there, this is not a, a magic knife. There are things that can happen that you're not familiar with uh, when using this. I've used this to stab into stuff, um, into trees in the woods primarily. And what can happen if you juice it with too much power and you don't pay attention to your wrist you can get you can get this kind of thing, uh, but really with this kind of flattened handle, uh, broad and flattened handle, they pretty much took care of most of that. So this, I mean, if we're talking about a fixed blade knife that is sm in a small, um, small footprint for effective self defense, I mean, a push dagger is pretty hard to beat, and this one is pretty hard to beat. Now, I have carried this multiple times uh, as my um, fixed blade and and i do it does the, for how i carry it i usually end up not it doesn't last the day why do i say that because i wear i carry in the waistband and that handle is both grabby on the shirt on this side and it's just a little bulbous enough that it rubs against my skin wrong just kind of you know even with a t-shirt it's just a little bit too present uh up against my skin so this usually gets removed, but the you know it usually doesn't stay in the belt the whole day. But the concept of it, I love. I just rarely think about push daggers to to pursue and find a nice uh, a nice one that I'll carry. Uh, so that is the safe keeper too. Now I can never keep these names straight. Peacekeeper, safe keeper. Uh, you know they have a lot of different kind of names like that. This next one has been with me a long time, almost as long as the Tonto, um, and it's the Trailmaster, the Trailmaster Bowie. Uh, again, from their leather days, I wish they still made leather sheaths. Uh, they were stout, sturdy, and very nice. And I just prefer uh, leather in most cases, unless unless I'm unless I'm carrying it con concealed or carrying it on my body. Um, you know, then I like Kydex, but. Uh, just for hanging on the belt or 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 you know carrying it outside setting it down and using it like i use this a lot outside and you'll see um evidence of that that I, annoyingly i cannot remove and i've gotten i've gotten a lot of advice on how to do so but that that is sap 
from a pine tree. Uh, now it's uh, over a year, <clears throat> a year on there. So I don't know if it's ever coming off, but you know, I've tried denatured alcohol. I've tried isopropyl. I've tried mayonnaise and fatty, fatty things. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll have someone re just, just re do a regrind of the blade, you know, like a very, very basic surface regrind of the blade. Um, there's, there's some stuff on here that I just, I can't even identify at this point. Um, right here. I don't even know what this is. It looks like clear nail polish, but it's not, um, I can assure you of that. But, uh, this knife, um, the first adventure I had with this knife was around a portion of Lake George. I got stranded in the dark, uh, by Lake George up in New York. And it was scary in the dark. I, I mean, cause I had walked for hours and hours and um, I, I thought I was on a loop trail. I thought I was going to come back to the parking lot, but I wasn't Lake George is massive. It's gigantic. And I just walked around a very, you know, uh, circuitous portion of it. And um, about sunset came up, came to a, a little point that, that jutted out into the water and there was a little tent and there was a, for some reason, an Australian army man uh, there and his fatigues and everything camping out. And he's like, yeah, mate, you got to turn around. This isn't a loop trail. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Uh, so I I did. I turned around and the sun was setting and uh, the blazes were very hard to see on the trail. I, I had no flashlight. I thought I was just going for a little, you know, it was like Gilligan's Island, a three hour tour. It wasn't. So this I had this in my backpack during the hike. And when I turned around and started into the woods, as soon as I was out of sight of the guy, I pulled this out, put it on my belt. And oh my God, I thought I was being stalked by a big cat while I was, while I was leaving. Um, I, my imagination was all over the place. It was creepy. It was creepy because they were unfamiliar woods, big timber, uh, in, in some of it. And like, uh, uh, the lake to one side, all sorts of noises and uh, some boggy areas to get through. So anyway, having this on my belt was uh, was made all the difference, made me feel so much better. I uh, had a little plan in mind. This was before I ever trained in Kali or anything like that, but I still had a little plan. If, if, uh, if I sensed a big cat lunging, I was gonna you know take it out with this. I don't even know if they had big cats up there in New York at that time. Anyway, great knife. It's been used a billion times since. Uh, this is my favorite batoning knife for um, fire pit night. And one time, you know, we have this big menacing white pine tree um, next door that is just like, oh, man, it's just looming over our house. And it drops limbs like mad in the winter. And I've used this to cut those up. And that's where the, that, those black sap things are. If you have any thoughts about how to remove it, let me know. Um, and if I haven't tried it, I'll try it. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you props if it works great great knife is the trail master this is in the carbon v steel it's been out in a bunch of different steels right now they're making it in 3v and uh, it's quite expensive uh, that kind of bums me out it's like okay it's 3v steel it's not um you know it's not a piece of saturn's rings you're forging this knife out of okay uh, next up is a an absolute classic this is this is probably another one of their most sellingest knives is that how you're supposed to say it one of the, one of the knives they sell the most. Um, this is the SRK Survival Rescue Knife, uh, a clip point knife, great sheath. By the way, all of these uh, Kydex sheaths, even though I said I prefer leather, they're Kydex. It's not Kydex. It's Gr Grivex or Securex. Uh, they're sort of thermal mold plastic recipe. They're excellent, excellent sheaths. Uh, I know people say they dull the knives, and that's probably correct, but. They're excellent sheaths for retention and uh, breathability uh, if they get wet. Uh, this knife has never been used, for not even for anything, not even just noodling around. I got this in 2005 to put in my wife's um, uh, go bag. She uh, it was my girlfriend slash fiance at the time and moved to London to open an office for the company she was working for and was there for a little over a year. So I packed her up a, a, a bag in case she had to flee London for any reason. And this was the fixed blade knife that was in there. And uh, thank God the authorities over there never uh, caught wind of it because, you know, owning something like this over there, I think, is a big, big no, no. Uh, but I figured if she had to escape and she needed a knife, I don't care. 
and she wouldn't care either. So it was this and a folder and some other stuff in there, uh, you know, op, like all sorts of survival stuff. But this has uh, has never seen use. And I, I kind of like I'm 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 going to leave it like that. It's a, just pristine. Uh, this is also the carbon five steel, uh, which is their inexpensive. Uh, it's an inexpensive option for their fixed blade knives. And I believe I bought this for 40 bucks uh, back in 2005. And I believe you can still get some version of the SRK for for close to that, uh, if not that. Uh, these sheaths all come with danglers too that you can remove. I usually do remove them. Uh, but this style knife, I would I would leave this on um, on that. Okay, next up is one. Oh my gosh, I love this knife. This this was uh, the the apartment protection knife in New York for a long time. This was my main, you know, go go to, and uh, and it's a classic American mm, classic American knife. With the leather sheath, this is the Laredo Bowie. Uh, now you get this, and it's in the um, Securex thermal mold plastic sheath, and it just looks weird. You know, this is a classic cowboy Bowie, and in that kind of sheath, it's weird. They do the same thing with the Natchez Bowie, um, another big cold steel Bowie. I'd love to get, but man, I don't want that. Uh, I don't want it in Kydex. Uh, Ten and a half inch blade. This is, I believe this is also carbon five. Uh, this one patinaed up nicely. This was a uh, troubled child from the start. It came with a, this is faux coca bolo. Uh, and it came with a crack there, as you can see in the handle, coffin shaped handle here. And uh, this was back in my less assertive days and I didn't send it back. Uh, nowadays, I just put it right back in the box and get, get a, a fresh one. Uh, but this, this, I didn't, it also, the blade got awful scratched up from this sheath. I'm not sure why. Um, so that's why I put the patina on it originally. Um, but this is years old. I've had this probably about 15 years at this point or yeah, 14 or 15 years. Uh, this has done, seen some action outside, uh, here. This is what, uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick. It's a chunker. And, and like the, um, like the Trailmaster, the swedge comes to a zero ground edge. It's not a sharp edge, but it's it's a nasty zero ground edge. You can use it in uh, a with a back cut. So in uh, in traditional American Bowie knife fighting, you use the the blade a lot, but you also use the swedge a lot uh, in these kind of dipping, uh, tapping, slashing, gouging, tearing back cuts. Um, and uh, some some people were prone were liked to turn the knife around and use that. I mean, if if you have a Bowie knife, test this out or any clip point, even if it's a folder, uh, turn it, take a piece of paper, and hit the piece of paper with the belly and see what the cut is like. Then turn it around and and even an unsharpened swedge, and then hit it like this. Boom! You will see a dramatic difference when you use the swedge as your primary edge and in a slash and, and use that tip it's devastating it's nasty it's not like a clean cut at all it's like a terrible horrifying gouge um or or split and that's that's what you get from that uh from that zero ground edge it is murder on a baton if you if you want to use this knife to baton which you might be tempted to because it's like a big wedge a very thick spine kind of full flat ground i mean uh that's the same thing with the trail master that's why i use that to baton um, uh, but if you do, your baton's going to get awfully chewed up, but, uh, it's a, it's a good price to pay. It's, it's the right price to pay for the security of knowing you have a decent back cutting swedge. I mean, am I right? Okay. That's the trail master. Awesome. I mean, I mean, that's the Laredo Bowie. Awesome. Awesome. So my main cabin fixed blade in my car, um, is this knife so i have one th there's the only fixed blade i remembered that i did not pull out is in my get home bag which is my survival kit in my car and i did not want it it's it's very uh ensconced in the trunk and um deeply packed and i did not pull that out because uh, i didn't want to forget about it and not put it back in and then need it heaven forbid so uh, that one is the gi tanto you might know what it looks like look it up it's it's good it's the kind of knife I wouldn't mind if it got stolen out of my car. I mean, I would mind, but 
it wouldn't be the end of the world. This is another one like that because this is the, my main cabin fixed blade. And this is the Roach Belly. Kaiser, I mean the uh, <laughs> Kaiser. The Cold Steel Roach Belly uh, in a sheath of my own making. Uh, it is a pretty good sheath, I got to say. A very comfortable knife to carry. Um, but I leave it in the car. It's a great utilitarian knife. It's based on a colonial American knife uh, commonly carried uh, for a do-it-all knife. That, that's what they were back then, you know. Um, do everything with this knife, including fight, including eat, including clean game, including carve, everything. Everything you do with a knife, you do with the one knife. Uh, this roach belly, I've I textured the handles with a with a Dremel, and then not too long ago wrapped it in jute cord and shellacked it. Gives it a really nice grip. Um, I I really like jute on on certain kind of small fixed blade knives. I just like the way it feels and the way it grips. Funny, interesting uh, thing about this knife. Uh, I've told this story before, but I met a guy. He was a friend, a cousin of a friend when I lived in New York, and he was kind of coming through town. And everything he owned was on his back in a backpack. And he had just been bumming around the country camping for like two years at this point. And I told him, you know, I asked him about knives and, and this is what he had been carrying the whole time the cold steel roach belly. And I was uh, at the time very disappointed. I was like, oh, I was thinking, Oh man, of all the cold steels, if I were bumming around the country, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I would have the trail master. I'd have the Tonto. I'd have the safekeeper in case I'd get, you know, I, I had all these ideas and he picks this cheap $12 knife. What in 41, 16 Krupp style, you know, uh, it, it, it vexed me, but then I got it. And I realized what an amazing knife. And there are four knives in this series. There's the Canadian belt knife. Uh, there's the Pendleton Hunter. There's this. And um, I think there's a there's a uh, there's another one. And I don't remember what it is, uh, but really kind of high quality for cheap knives. I mean, really robust and take a great edge and are kind of flexible. This is almost like a fillet knife. Uh, in a way and just keep going it's not glorious it's not that pretty though i really do like the uh, profile of it it'd be great to have a custom knife like this um i've also thought about buying one of these and double edging it uh, you know grinding an edge in the back below the jimping um it's kind of a great platform if you want to get an inexpensive knife and noodle around with it like i have or or go even further i got it originally to practice the um the making of kydex sheaths and i had remembered that the guy that i was just talking about said this was a good one so i got it it was 12 bucks when i got it i think now they're 15 uh but the roach belly i i dig it i dig it as a matter of fact how cool would it be if cold steel did a version of this in uh, a more premium setup with a thicker blade and nicer you know full tang of micarta sort of affair i think that'd be very cool all right, so that's the roach belly. I am not including my neck knives in this, my cold steel neck knives, nor am I including the uh, swords and machetes. I only have one sword, but the machete type, larger type things. Okay, so next up is a discontinued dagger that I got, um, I'd say about six months ago at this point, uh, from someone on eBay. Uh, or actually on blade forums and that is the peacekeeper 2 now i had a peacekeeper 2 years ago that i gave to a friend uh, on a visit to philadelphia uh, he gave me a sweet pair of uh, american optic sunglasses so i gave him i gave him this i was traveling with with one of these um, and and then i always wanted it back <laughs> Not that, I mean, not that one in particular, but I always wanted to get another one, never did. And then they discontinued them and that bummed me out. But I saw someone offering this and, and so I snatched it up. Uh, this, when these came out, it was sort of the inexpensive alternative to the Taipan has a lot of the same features in that um, both bevels are hollow ground. It's broad and both uh, edges have a belly. Uh, towards the tip so a dagger great for thrusting no doubt but also great for slashing and for cutting with that uh, hollow ground with the hollow ground edges with the bellies um some daggers are just way more um 
bent towards thrusting. Like, like the Spartan Harzi dagger, for instance. A great dagger, also hollow ground bevels, also very sharp edges, uh, but but more to the point in meaning there's less curve in getting to the point in the blade. So less effective at slashing, more effective at thrusting. Uh, this is kind of a jack of all trades. And, and I like how um, Cold Steel does that with their double-edged knives. You know, they make them so that they have slashing value and cutting value as well as thrusting important in this day and age uh, i took the clip off these things are these plastic clips I'm, I'm not very fond of plus it was very uh high slung and and had no retention so i'm gonna put a uh, uh either a, a in the waistband strap or or some other form of uh, clip on this one this was a great pajama knife sweat pant knife a uh, light short workout knife because it's light but capable same thing with that uh Coburn. all right uh next is one uh that my brother vic got me he's gotten me a number of them he, actually the next two he's gotten me this is a cool one this is from their historical uh, uh offerings this is the rondell dagger it's got a really beautiful i'll show it in the sheath first really beautiful sheath look at the uh there, there's the shape there metal shape and then the fer or is this the ferrule? The ferrule down at the bottom. Is that what that's called? Now I'm now I'm uh, now I'm just uh, flaking on it. Ferrule in shape. One of those is one, and one is the other. Um, set up for any sort of grip. Totally round grip. Edge orientation on this knife does not matter because it's a triangular shaped blade. And these edges are not acute, but they are nasty. You could hit someone's forearm and split the skin down to the bone with this, I do believe. Um, it is nasty in that regard. You could hit someone's blade and, and, and break a blade with this, um, with this triangular shaped blade. You could thrust it and have a wound that won't close. It, this is a horrifying weapon and, and used for... Uh, getting in between the plates of armor, getting through chain mail, uh, very effective at all these things. That, that triangular point is not going to fail. It's it, it's going to take a lot to get that point to fail. It's just so stout. And, you know, three three makes the best, uh, most stable. Three legs makes the most stable stool. Well, those uh, three edges coming together makes the most stable point. And uh, this thing is just going to, it's just going to do damage no matter how you grab it. That's how they can afford to have a totally round handle. You don't want totally round handles normally because uh, the the blade uh, the handle can turn in your hand and you won't be presenting the edge uh, at the proper orientation to get your cuts. Um, that's why you know I have a uh, I have a traditional Filipino weapons gladius that has a perfectly cylindrical handle, and that's the one thing if I were if uh, if the bottom falls out and I need to start carrying my gladius for self protection, I am going to to file down or uh, level down the sides of the handle so that it doesn't turn in my hand um, in in <laughs> in use. Little fantasy there, and it's not a good fantasy. Uh, so yeah, and then these rondelles. This is why it's called the rondel dagger. Um, both the guard and the pommel are have these have these uh, rondelles on them that are decorative and beautiful, but also capture your hand, your, your gauntleted hand as you fight that knight and try and get in that can he's wearing. The Rondell Dagger. Okay. My brother got this one for me uh, at, I don't know, at a gun show or something, but uh, this was a birthday or a Christmas present a few years back. And this thing is... Something else, man. This is the Chaos Kukri. Um, if you're familiar with Cold Steel, you'll you'll know the Chaos line is a line of knives based around this handle, a knuckle duster handle um, made of aluminum, cast aluminum. It is quite heavy. Or is this steel? You know, I don't even know. I'm talking out of school now. I'm not sure if that's steel or aluminum. It's pretty damn heavy, I got to say. Uh, but like the uh, 1918 uh, trench knife behind me on the wall, it's got this pointed nut uh, for, for knocking noggins. 
And so, so your fist is protected against anything that might uh, come at it. And, uh, you know, like a face, <laughs> you know, this is a, this is a knuckle duster to beat the band. Uh, so then you have this massive, heavy, broad kukri blade attached to it. I mean, this is just a, a, a yeah, chaos. This is for the chaos of the melee. Um, and uh, so glad I have it. It does not get any use. Uh, you might be shocked to find out it does not get any use, but it's a it's a um, it's a thing that makes me feel good. It's a feel good implement because having it around uh, makes you confident that you have enough kukri around you and enough knuckle duster around you not to be caught flat footed. So I'm, I'm very happy about this knife. Uh, I'd love to check out all the other chaos knives. Um, they have a big Bowie style one. Uh, they have a Tonto. They have a dagger. Uh, all the things you might imagine. But um, for me, this uh, Kukri is is the one uh, because that long, heavy blade balances out this uh, pretty heavy uh, handle. So, uh, and a great big giant Securex sheath with, I love this right here. Danger, do not grip here. You don't want to slice your hand as this comes out. It reminds me of the, the uh, little notes and arrows you see on jet fighters you know like don't stand here or, or you'll get sucked into the uh, intake or you know don't stand here on the wing or whatever so yeah pretty cool grip down here grip down here they have little arrows grip here they must have had some someone hold it right here and just slice their finger off okay so last up last up is the knife that inspired this whole conversation and this is a conversation because i hear you yelling at your screen and that is the Taipan. Oh, my God. Ever since this knife came out, whenever it came out many, many moons ago, I've been wanting it. I've been wanting it. And that desire never diminished. Uh, it's funny because uh, some knives come out and, and I get I, over the moon about them. I mean, I can think of a bunch of them right now. And I get over the moon about it. And, oh, desperate. I want it so bad. And why can't I miss the drop and this and that? And then... A month later, two months later, three months later, or a year later, whatever it is, I'm like, oh, that was cool. But I would right now I wouldn't be carrying that thing. So I'm glad I didn't buy it. Well, that never happened with this. The Taipan is their dagger. It was one of the very early ones uh, with the um, Trailmaster and the Tonto. This is one of the very early ones. It's been at a number of price points, very out of reach uh, a lot of times. And then it's come now that they're doing 3v on a lot of their fixed blades this is one of them uh the the more um pedestrian vg10 san my versions have come down into into the part of the atmosphere i'm willing to spend you know this was a, a sub one what is it i think this was 150 bucks on amazon uh anyway let me sh let me show it to you beautiful secure x sheath um this is one i don't mind not having leather uh, look at this thing, a broad, beautiful uh, dagger blade with, oh, I got a little schmutz on the tip. I'm not sure how that got there, but beautiful, broad, hollow ground bevels. Those bevels are about three quarters of an inch um, that, or no, 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 about half inch, a little more than half inch uh, on each one of those bevels. Very sharp edge. Now, I I pulled the trigger on this. Uh, because I saw the supply of them dwindling and I, I started to feel like, what if, what if I wait and then, and then the only ones available are three V for 400 bucks or whatever they're charging it, which is a little ridiculous. Then I'm really going to feel like, Oh, I got to wait for the three V to be not a super steal for me to buy it again. Uh, so I just snatched it up. So glad I did. But the first one they sent me was totally jacked up, uh, right here at the Ricasso. You see, See how the two edges terminate at the Ricasso? They're symmetrical, and then it dips, dips down right here. Well, one side was ground all the way down to be, um, it was sharp, but it was ground all the way down to the Ricasso. So the blade curved in right there, and I was like, there is no way I am keeping this. This is uh, someone, someone got a text from their girl while they were sharpening uh, this knife and put a little bit of extra juice at the end and now it's deformed and they're trying to sell it. And I was like, is this the state of cold steel under GSM? This is an outrage. Um, and so I just sent it back to, 
Amazon. And before I, you know, I, the day I brought the box uh, to Kohl's to return to Amazon, uh, the next one was sitting on my front step, like looking at me. Uh, so I brought it in and it's perfect. This thing is perfect. Uh, it's got the classic setup with the um, skull crusher, the pointed skull crusher and the, um, and the aluminum um, guard. But like I said, these are aluminum. They were originally brass in the old ones I had. Uh, but I don't think, I don't think the Taipan was ever in brass if I remember correctly. Uh, but again, uh, the broadness and the belly uh, allows for great slashing and cutting performance on this amazing stabbing, thrusting knife. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I feel once I got this, I felt like, OK, I can finally do a fixed blade um, cold steel uh, collection video. I, I've been doing the the folders a bit because uh, more have come into the collection that way. And I. I, I kind of always feel in a complete state with the folder collection, uh, but with the with the fixed blades, there there were some gaping gaping holes here, and this one fills it mostly. All right, well, thank you for coming uh, coming on this voyage through my cold steel fixed blade collection. Uh, Master Tonto, Coben, Culloden, Safekeeper Two, Trailmaster, SRK, Laredo Boy, Roach Belly, Peacekeeper Two, Rondell Dagger, Chaos Kukri, and Taipan. They all warm the heart. And uh, they'll all make you feel safe having them around, safe and capable. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, join us again next Wednesday for another trip through my knife collection. And uh, and then Thursday Night Knives, of course, live right here on Facebook. Um, I mean, on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday nights. And then, of course, Sunday. Check out our interviews on Sunday, uh, every Sunday right here. You can also download it on the apps Jim just had. Speaking of Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, for him, I am Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast